The cook is one of Texas Chainsaw's most oppressive family members, and today we're gonna to be bringing you a complete guide on everything there is to know about everyone's favorite chef. We'll be covering how his ability works, the most effective way to utilize his kit, the best ways to navigate through both his perk and ability skill trees, and finally, what perks and builds work especially well for this family member. We'll even be covering some high-level play strategies towards the end of the guide. This video has been divided into timestamps in order to help you navigate through some sections you may be looking for. Additionally, I do lots of TCM guides here on YouTube, so if you enjoy what you see today, consider dropping a like or subscribing as it helps me to continue making this content for everyone. Lastly, I live stream frequently on Twitch, so feel free to come over and say hello. We'd love to hang out with you. Link in the description. But without further ado, let's get cooking. The Cook is by far one of the most valuable family members in Texas Chainsaw, and many players consider him to be a must-pick in the majority of matches. He excels in delivering extremely valuable information to his team quickly, while simultaneously burdening victim players with exceptional slowdown. Though the Cook may not always be on the heels of victim players, his utility is undeniably important, and he brings a variety of tools for the entire family. The Cook's main ability is called Seek. This ability allows him to pinpoint a victim's exact location location and reveal their aura for a short period of time. Base kit a victim's aura will only be revealed to the cook himself, but through upgrades you can share a victim's location with the entire family, more on that later. In order to use the ability, simply listen for a noisy victim using the exaggerated sound waves and cease moving your camera once you've located a victim. You'll know that you've found a victim when your camera zooms in a bit, letting you know that you'll soon reveal the exact location of the victim you're listening in on. The cook can even string together victim highlights by continuing to use the seek ability even after he's revealed a player. Victims are able to counter the cook's ability by simply standing still or crouch walking. The cook also isn't able to detect victims who are noisily picking up items or opening crawl spaces. The cook is also able to detect a running generator with his seek ability, and this can sometimes prove useful when defending the property and checking on escape routes. Additionally, Julie's ability grants her immunity from the cook's seek ability while active. Locating victims will help chase-oriented family members such as Leatherface to quickly track down and execute survivors. Even revealing victims who aren't in a dangerous situation can leave them uneasy and possibly change their plan of action. Cook players with extensive map knowledge and good communication skills can completely turn the tide of a match by providing priceless information to the family. The cook has access to a secondary ability and these are padlocks. Padlocks are essentially just an additional lock that can be placed on select doors and gates in order to slow victims down further. Padlocks, just like normal locks, will consume a tool upon completion. Connie is still able to use her focused ability in order to almost instantly unlock a padlock that has been placed by the cook. Many experienced cook players will reinforce weak areas with these padlocks in order to slow victims down or even double lock some certain pathways to prevent quick escapes. The cook is also unable to replace a padlock if the one he placed earlier has been unlocked by a victim. There are ways for Cook to upgrade his padlocks even further through Grandpa abilities and perks, but more on that in just a bit. It should be noted that though the Cook can use his padlock in most locations, there are a few exceptions. He is unable to lock any basement exit doors and additionally cannot lock any horizontal sliding doors found elsewhere on the map, such as the door leading to the front slaughter area on the slaughterhouse map. Aside from that, everything else is pretty much fair game. So now you may be wondering, how do I know which lock locations are the most effective? I'm going to showcase a few incredibly strong ones that I personally love. With that said, I think lock locations can be fluid based on how your other family members are preparing to secure certain areas of the map. Additionally, I think the best cook players are also excellent victim players. They know how victims typically move and which routes they normally attempt, so if you want to become an ungodly talented cook player, I'd encourage you to get some victim playtime in as well. Also, if you don't know the names of some locations I list today, feel free to download these TCM maps that I've made. They're available in our community Discord, and there's a link in the description. So let's start off with a relatively simple map for padlocks, and this is going to be the family house. This map really isn't too complicated when it comes to finding strong doors to padlock due to the small interior of the home. One of the most crucial locks that you'll need to know about is located on the hallway door that leads out to the driveway. This lock is almost a must pick as it can be detrimental to the family if multiple victims make it outside. The next crucial lock you'll need on this map is located in the sitting room, and this also leads to the front fields and driveway. 
This lock is pretty much equally important as the previously mentioned one and can have similar consequences if victims find their way outside. The last lock for the family house is a bit more flexible, but many cook players swear by placing it on the blue door located in the back porch room. This lock can be pretty vital, and if you wanted to, you could also place this on the gate leading from the back gardens to the sunflower fields or in the car graveyard attached to the gate that leads to the car battery escape. Aside from those lock locations, there aren't a ton of other top tier choices, but I always encourage players to be creative and experiment with new places for padlocks. On the gas station, you'll find a few incredibly important lock locations that are crucial to your success as a family. The first lock is located on the red door in the smoke room that leads to the exterior and road escape. This one is pretty important as it can serve as a last resort to victims who are quickly trying to slip out quietly and prevent certain victims such as Connie from opening up an easy escape for the entire team. You can also lock either of the gates leading to the compound for some extra security, but just be aware of how you're distributing your resources. Another lock I find to be quite effective is located in the backfield attached to the car battery escape. I find it's common that the family is patrolling closer to the compound, so this lock can help to give you some extra travel time between locations. Aside from those two locks, I think it can be wise to lock up the other gates in the exterior that you may not be monitoring as closely or the gate that's attached to the generator. On the slaughterhouse, there are a few more key locations for padlocks. On the whole, I generally like to lock up the interior portion of the map. This would include all of those red doors which lead to the slaughterhouse corridor and the others which lead to the old hanging room. By doing this, you'll have an easier time keeping watch on key items located in the central area of the map, and it only leaves you to watch the single sliding door that leads to the slaughterhouse. Aside from this, there are some strategies that involve locking down the parking lot gate and office doors, and similarly locking down the loading dock gate and the back slaughter area doors. These two styles of play will involve more communication and coordination with your team as you'll have all your padlocks in a single area. This can prove to be very effective if executed correctly. Now that we've got our lock locations out of the way, let's take a look at the cook's attributes. You'll notice that he has the lowest base endurance of any family member in the entire game. This is largely due to the strong information gathering tied to his kit. He has a fairly average blood harvesting category and offers some serious strength only being beaten out by Leatherface. In terms of what to upgrade, it depends very much on the perks that you're bringing. I typically lean towards rounding out my endurance in savagery, and I tend to leave the blood harvesting bee for the most part. This is due to the fact that the cook has a base vial of 100 blood points, meaning he can level grandpa up with a full vial without having to add points to the category whatsoever. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't ever look into adding points into the blood harvesting category, and it largely depends on what your build is and what your fellow family members are doing as well. I find that upgrading his savagery can be nice for securing some kills, and endurance can help you keep up with victims a bit more than you'd normally be able to. But with the attributes covered, let's talk perks. Before we start rattling off perks, it's important to remember that certain perks will be more effective with specific builds, attributes, and so on. And don't worry, we'll be covering skill trees right after this. The first perk I wanted to cover today is one of Cook's unique perks, and this is security pins. This makes the Cook's padlocks 50% harder to unlock for victims. This is arguably one of the best perks for the Cook due to the fact that his padlocks provide some serious slowdown, and this only makes escaping more brutal for the victims. This perk is of course countered by Connie, but on the whole, victims will have to spend a lot more time unlocking doors, and having more time to hunt down victims is always a good thing. The next perk I wanted to mention today is Scout. Scout increases your movement speed by 15%, but reduces your melee damage by 10%. Scout is a very powerful perk in Texas Chainsaw, and I find it to be particularly strong on the Cook as well, due to his limited endurance. This perk really helps to get around the map more efficiently, and because the cook has some pretty high savagery, the melee damage debuff doesn't feel quite as negative. After that, we've got the perk Universal Donor. This perk increases the amount of blood you collect from buckets by 40%. The reason that I find this to be such a strong perk is that the cook has a built-in 100 blood points, and this can give him even more of an edge when it comes to feeding grandpa and slowing down victims. This perk is a great tool and can serve as a wonderful counter to aggressive victims and even perks such as Agitator. In the cook's skill tree, there are a multitude of good options for acquiring perks and abilities that work well on this family member. We'll also be covering the cook's ability skill tree here in just a moment. 
The first route I wanted to cover will offer you the perk security pins while also focusing heavily on some savagery perks and grandpa abilities to add to your build. Also remember that you can always respec your skill tree if you aren't happy with the random perks you've acquired. Starting out, you'll want to take a left towards the perk Dracula. Pull out the neighboring sections and once you come to your first crossroads, you'll want to take a left towards Hysterical Strength. While filling out this section, you may also notice that you'll be obtaining Feral and Brute Strength. From here, you'll take another right at your next crossroad in order to obtain security pins. From here, you'll make your way up to surgical and two random perks to finish out this tree. Our next skill tree route is a bit more focused on endurance perks, so players who enjoy a more movement-based build will like this route. You'll start by going directly up towards Unrelenting and filling out the other sections. At your first crossroads, pick which direction you'd like to go based off of if you want more attribute points with a random perk or the Always in Sync Grandpa ability and a random perk. Either way, you'll still be able to get Scout, so just pick what route better suits your needs. After obtaining the perk Scout, you'll once again reach a crossroads, and with this, you have some more choices. If you head to your left, you'll be able to obtain security pins once again. If you head upwards, you'll be granted more endurance-based perks, such as down the rabbit hole and dinner bell. And finally, if you head to the right, you'll be able to obtain universal donor and the grab ability no one escapes hell. My personal favorite is heading up to the right for some more blood-related perks and one of the best grandpa abilities you can bring in a match, but you do miss out on those nice security pins. The last skill tree section I wanted to cover today is a lot more related to getting grandpa abilities rather than perks for your personal use. For this path, you'll want to head to the right towards big swings and well, well, well. Complete the surrounding areas and from there, you'll want to continue upwards. At the crossroads, you'll take a right in order to gain the Windu and Excited Grandpa abilities. However, you can also cut to the left if you're looking to pick up Scout. After this, you'll reach another crossroads, and I typically like to pull to the left in order to gain the No One Escapes Hell ability. But you can also pull to the right for Blood Banker and don't have all day. Finally, finish out the web by pulling to the left for Universal Donor. Just like any other character in Texas Chainsaw, the Cook's Ability Skill Tree offers a magnitude of upgrades at various levels. It's important to remember that percentages do stack when it comes to the Ability Skill Tree. On the left side, the Cook has offered reduced Ability Drain by 30 and 60% at levels 1 and 2, and at level 3, it takes half the amount of time to focus in on a victim. Down the middle lane, the Cook has offered increased Victim Detection range by 10 and 20% at levels 1 and 2, and at level 3, successfully highlighted victims will stay marked twice as long. Lastly, down the right lane, the Cook has offered increased Ability Bar Recharge Rate by 33 and 60% at levels 1 and 2, and at level 3, highlighted victims are marked for the entire family. My personal favorite route to take is upgrading his Victim Detection range, both at levels 1 and 2 for 30% increased range in total, and then skewing a bit to the right at level 3 in order to share my marked victims with the entire family. But again, there are tons of options, and I also really do enjoy the level 3 increased Focus Speed ability as well. There are some various techniques you can use as the cook in order to make yourself a more unpredictable and unstoppable force. One of my favorite strategies that experienced cook players use is revealing victims in the basement during the early stages of the match. This puts Leatherface in a more favorable position and places immense amount of stress onto the victims. It can help to slow victims from making their way out of the basement as they may be more involved in chase, and this strategy can aid in some very early executions as it gives Leatherface a lot more information to go off of. I will say that the best cook players are able to strike a balance between helping Leatherface while also securing the property and collecting blood simultaneously. Just be careful not to put all your eggs in one basket. Another strategy that a lot of high-level cook players will use is not completing their seek ability when locating a victim. It may sound strange, but experienced cook players will often locate a victim, and just before revealing the victim's aura, they'll turn off the seek ability. They can then share their findings with the rest of the family members, thus giving the victim no knowledge that the family is aware of their location, and victims have less time to react. If you're going to use this strategy, you need to have extremely good map knowledge and also be able to give exact location callouts. Just as importantly, you need to be playing on a team that can correctly utilize and interpret the information you've given them, otherwise this really won't work. This strategy mostly exists for veteran players who are looking to get an extra edge over the victims. One last high-level strategy I wanted to share with you pertains to the cook's increased audio detection. Even if a victim is playing stealthy or making very little noise, you can still track down their locations by listening for victim chatter. In this clip, you'll hear Sonny talking, and even though I couldn't spot him with my seek ability, I was still able to discern where he was located.
Fast forward just a little bit, and I was easily able to track down Sonny. So throughout the duration of this video, we've painted the cook in a pretty positive light. And though the cook is truly one of the strongest family members available, he does have his fair share of weaknesses. The cook is pretty lackluster when it comes to actually hunting down victims. His limited endurance makes it quite a challenge to keep up, not to mention he isn't able to mimic any victim movements, bringing his chase potential down even further. Additionally, the cook can be a pretty terrible lone wolf player. If you're planning on taking everything into your own hands, this might not be the family member you want to do it with. Though he can locate and slow down victims extremely well, it doesn't really matter all that much if you aren't giving any information to the rest of the family. He is such a team-oriented family member, and so much of his kit will be missed if used incorrectly. The Cook is truly a team player if there ever was one, and with so much to offer, he is hands down one of the most incredible family members in TCM. That's all we have for today, but if you did enjoy this video, consider liking and subscribing as it helps me to continue making these guides. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you in the next one.